guys, what's going on? It's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a wonderful day as always. And I hope everyone's doing okay while they're kind of quarantined in their houses. Uh, it's been super fun, boring, and I love being a teacher now that my son has to do homeschooling. But I'm glad that you guys get to spend more time with me. Awesome, right? So, Ezra McCandless, I'm trying to be neutral. <laughs> I try to be neutral in my videos to a point. I usually give you my opinion on what I think happened, but I try not to throw too much hate on to anyone while I'm talking about what, what happened. Ezra McCandless, I just don't like her. I think she's a horrible person. And I know some of you guys are on her side and think that she's innocent or a, that she was attacked and she is a victim herself, but I disagree. I don't like the Ezra that lied about a sexual assault. I don't like this super creepy Ezra. I don't like this evil-eyed Ezra, nor do I like this evil-eyed Ezra. I definitely don't like court Ezra or fake sorry Ezra, not even the real legit Ezra. So obviously she was convicted and sentenced even for killing Alex Woodworth, her ex-boyfriend, I suppose. And you may have seen my other videos about Ezra McCandless. If you haven't, the links will be below. I talked about the trial, I talked about the crime, and I talked about the sentencing. I believe I have only two videos of her. This will be the third. Check those out, please. They will be below. I just want to talk about what has recently been going on with Ezra McCandless. That has gotten me kind of pissy. I'm not happy about it. I don't understand how this is legal or possible. Now, if you remember in the sentencing, the prosecutors talked about how Ezra McCandless had a GoFundMe and she was selling her artwork online. And the defense was super quick to say that that stuff had been deactivated and that she said debunked too, which I found very idiotic, but you know, whatever. I'm sorry. I don't like, I don't like this chick and I didn't like her lawyer either. She said they'd been debunked like a ghost. So they were trying to defend the fact that she didn't do any of this. It was all, you know, other people. And she has no control over that because she's in jail. However, now she's trying to supposedly raise money for her appeal because she wants a retrial, which of course she does. Everybody who gets a murder conviction is going to try to get a retrial. They just automatically are going to do an appeal. You know, the lawyer, if it's a decent lawyer, is going to immediately start an appeal. But she is officially trying to raise money by selling her artwork on her Instagram page. And I came across her Instagram page when I was doing her sentencing video. And at that time, there was already people that were buying her artwork. Now, whether they were buying her artwork because they wanted to have a piece of art that was done by a murderer, or whether they think she's innocent and they're trying to help her by giving a donation as payment for the artwork, I'm sure there's some people doing each of those things. So I want to show you guys several of the drawings that are being sold for Ezra's appeal. But I just want to make it clear that I am not publicizing these pictures to be purchased. Obviously, I'm, I am completely against that. So if we even start with this picture in particular, you can see that she drew a wolf with what appears to be parts of her face starting to come through from the wolf. This certainly shows some insight into her mind. If we look at day one, it's interesting that she draws a fox and writes fox face as a reflection of self. The prosecution said that she was tricky like a fox many times. Let's look at the comments for this one. Can't wait to read my victim impact statement at your sentencing, Ezra. Any justice for you was gone in the moments Alex languished while you murdered him. Fuck you. The fox 
and flowers. The fox knows the woods intimately. Spirits rely on the fox as their guide. Awareness, responsiveness, positive energy. This one needs no title nor narrative, does it? Coward was drawn on day four. Who was on the stand on day four? And then we have a bicycle, him, bikes and ghosts, followed by no trust. I've learned the hard way. People are not always what they seem. Day four was a very interesting day. Who might have been on the stand on day four? And then we have this picture, which eerily seems to me to possibly be the victim, which angers me more than you can understand. And I'm sure it angers many of you as well. A lot of these pictures anger me. Why is this okay? How could she sit there and draw these things, giving her narrative through her artwork? through her own murder trial, and then to try to make money off of it. Money off of a 24-year-old boy named Alex Woodworth and his early, early passing from this earth. That should never have happened. But is this her real narrative, or is this just what she wants you to believe she's thinking? I thought I'd go day by day and try to get into her mindset, but then I realized that she's very manipulative and I don't think she's drawing what she's really thinking. No, I think she's drawing what she believes her supporters would expect for her to draw. And even then she's having trouble doing that because she's drawing masks, which would mean someone who's changing themselves repeatedly and hiding, hiding from the prosecution and prosecutors of LGBTQ and gender fluidity. She's drawing I miss you and whatnot, referring to Alex, but really that's just to make her look sympathetic. She's doing what would make the most sense for a logical person, but she's not logical, so her pictures still shine through with her insanity. The only drawing with any truth was on day two when she drew Take Me Home because she really did believe that she would be going home at the end of this trial. How is that okay? I don't get it. Before she was officially convicted and sentenced, fine. But even then I don't agree with it. But you're not supposed to be legally able to make money off of any murder charges or any crime if she had been found not guilty that would be fine but she is a guilty murderer in prison for at least 50 years and she's allowed to sell her artwork on instagram and make a profit off of it and not only that, but the artwork, the majority of the artwork is from when she was in court. She was, you know, doodling while they were doing her trial. So while potentially, you know, one of the victim statements was being done, she could have been sitting there drawn a picture of Jason, which there are pictures of him, drawings of him, pictures of him. I mean, what the, what? How is this okay? How is this okay? Why is this legal? Why is this allowed in any way? And then to top it off, she has a super big presence on social media. She's writing things. She's writing things to her supporters and complaining about the media and complaining about how she is a survivor. She was a victim. Nobody cares about how her life has been ruined and how upset she is. I mean, fuck you. I'm sorry, Ezra McCandless. You are evil. And I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sure that some, I'm going to get some angry comments by people who are rooting for her. But seriously, she is a piece of... I'm sorry. I really, really don't like her. I can't help it. I can't help it. I think she's an evil person. And I think 
I find it strange that, you know, a lot of people on different media sources saying that her group of friends that were all smart philosophy people just don't seem like the type of people that could commit a murder like this. So how the hell did that happen? And they said the same when they read what she's been putting on social media. Now, when I read what she put on social media, I absolutely see someone who would murder somebody just to save face. She is an egotistical narcissist and to write this stuff and complain about people and, you know, say that she's a victim and a survivor and all this crap, like, come on. No, you're not. You're a murderer. You shouldn't get away with any of this. You shouldn't get away with writing stuff and posting it and that being allowed. Since when have we allowed prisoners, murderers, murderers that kill someone by stabbing them 16 times, including the scrotum and the head, to hang out on Instagram, even if she's not literally the one doing it and she's sending it to her mother. I don't even understand this. Now, this should not be okay, but I mean, I guess you can't really stop it. However, I do think you can stop the sale of her pictures. I don't think that should be okay. Yeah, all right, so maybe it's it's being done by her her family or whoever else, so technically it's not her doing it, but it's on her page. She shouldn't have a page. Take her page down. Don't you lose the ability to do things that the outside world can do when you go to prison. But that doesn't count for Instagram and, I don't know, Facebook and whatever else. That doesn't count for drawing pictures of your victims and your boyfriends and whatever the hell else you want and, and selling them and selling pictures of yourself with butterflies and shit. Like, what the hell? So I'm going to show you some of the writing she did, and they're just ridiculous. It's interesting that people compared her to Jodi Arias all through this. You know, they're both the, the girlfriends that were obsessive and ended up killing their boyfriend. Well, it seems to me that she's doing like a play-by-play -play of Jodi Arias at this point. This is her mentor. Maybe they write letters to each other. So first off, Ezra McCandla said this about the verdict. In the end, this case was not decided on facts, logic, or the law. It was decided on retribution, shock, emotion, and prejudice. I don't know what case she was referring to, because I watched a legal battle that went the right direction. Okay, guys, I am going to read this entire thing that she wrote about basically media coverage. Uh, so either bear with me and listen to it or skip through this part. So here we go. I've touched on the topic of media before. I feel that I should acknowledge its presence. I have no obligation. I have no commitment. I feel that I must comment as things have unfortunately gotten out of hand. I know that I'll never successfully combat the prejudicial, persistent, invasive coverage. I am only one, but I am one. So I would like to express my voice on what I have observed. Most of all, the lack of respect for anyone involved in this tragic event is appalling. We are stripped to our skeletons and reduced to abstract ideas, feeling the edge of every second that passes by. I know that I'm not the only individual with this burden. I feel in their behavior, they disregard our pain, the loss. This is not just something to click, watch, subscribe, and comment on. I ask, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant? I'm never going to win the media. I am not here to do that. What I am here to do is draw awareness, to gather support, as well highlight a system that is broken. I want to thank all of you that do support me. I want to thank all that continue to believe in me. Your support keeps this fight alive. Not only a fight for myself, but the fight for a better future. A future without a crazy, murdering psycho. Based on the writings that Ezra is putting out right now, I think she's working on an appeal 
based on the media circus, which is the same thing that Jodi Arias has done. So we'll wait and see what she has to say with her appeal, but she's clearly complained repeatedly about how she was put in the eye of the media storm and that it was unfair how she was just reduced to this skeleton of a person on TV and all this stuff. You know she loved it. You know she liked being the popular murderer in a trial. So I'm sorry to everybody, anybody who I offended. I just, um, I find it unfair. I don't understand how she can be able to do that. But I just wanted to let you guys know a couple of these things that were irking me. And I wanted to show you some of the writings that she did and see what you think. So let me know what you guys think, whether you're pro Ezra or you hate Ezra like me, or you know, what you think happened. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video or any of my other videos, please like, please share, please subscribe and check out the other videos on my page. I will put the links of the Ezra McCandless videos that I've already done below so you can check those out as well. And that's going to do it for now. I hope you guys are all doing well and everybody's safe and healthy. That's it for now. I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thank you.